It's the Sunday Roast, once again, episode number 13, and uh, we look a little different today. A little luck of the Irish, as Danny's not feeling so great, and uh, as usual, this is the Sunday Roast. Welcome to the the Sunday Roast with Mike and Danny. Oh, hey. This is Danny. And this is Mike, and we're kind of strange. We're in the tub, and we drink a lot. At least one of us does. This is not Mike's body, but that is Danny's, and that's really gross. Thanks for watching the Sunday Roast. We love, we love our, our fans. fans. And here's Danny's mom. His name's Michael. Is it? Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and he's a Jew. You can tell he's a Jew. Look Ask at him. Ask him who's his daddy. Magical moment. I can almost taste Danny. <laughs> it's so close, I can almost taste him. <laughs> And now, the moment you've been waiting for, it's the Sunday Roast with your hosts, Magic Mike and Danny the GFP. Hello, Dan. You look a little different today. How you been? (laughs) (laughs) It's been a hectic week, buddy. (laughs) Someone someone popped you uh, after your show today, uh, after the game, and uh, and now you came out looking like this. So... uh, it's been a, a strict diet. Uh, it's been a rigorous regime, but I think it's starting to pay off. Yeah, I mean, after what five hours, it uh, it's 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 showing dividends. As you can see tonight, we're we're uh, we're missing one Daniel Sweetman the ninth uh, Esquire, and uh, just feeling a little bit unwell. Uh, I think he 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 used his entire pod. He blew his podcast load on the post game show today, and why not? What a game! We'll talk about that very little. Um, and, uh, and so instead, one of the few people I feel like I could just waffle on about and have a few laughs with over the, uh, the next hour to hour and a half or so, we have, uh, two members of the Gooners podcast tonight for the price of one. Oh, and we haven't podcasted in months. No, we have just, a podcast. Yeah. We were just saying literally, you know, we like the idea of having a podcast. It's a good social lubricant i find for situations when you can you know gloat to well it's 2022 who the fuck doesn't have a podcast nowadays but the fact that we actually have the podcast is a little inconvenient i think yeah that that's the part where like like in order for people to i think you have to renew your card every like three weeks and i think we're we're a little late for that um mm-hmm. so we're, we're just nicking a podcast living at this point um but uh so this is a podcast where you, the va- the valued viewer, if you exist, um, <laughs> can uh, can help drive the conversation. It's a little bit arsenal, a little bit rock and roll, um, and a lot of just talking way too much about the things that we've been doing over the last few days. So uh, we will start about uh, start talking about arsenal a little bit. I mean, dude, it's gonna is this gonna really happen? Like, are we gonna go there on Thursday and 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 finish this? Or is it going to go down to the wire? Look, I, I, I'm quite pessimistic at the best of times. You know that, that I'm not the most positive person in the world. Um, but That's why you're sitting alone in a, in, a, in a wall-less, artless room. I mean, that's actually yeah. where you spend all your time now. because you're Exactly, yeah, playing, playing rooms. Um, no, I th- look, I've got the faith in this squad. I've got the faith in this manager to be able to pull it off. But... It's it's the Conte factor. This is where it does matter. I think you know when you look at um, Tottenham Hotspur's uh, performance and result that they got from Liverpool, which I don't think many people were expecting whatsoever. That is where the Conte factor does come into play. When these big pressure moments start to uh, start to happen, he's been there. He's done that, um, and and we're very much still an immature side, and w- we've got no track record of how we can. You know, we can't really, we don't have much of a history to gauge what we're going to be like in these kinds of situations. So um, right now, I'm not counting my chickens before the roost, but we're, we're in a very, very good position. Counterpoint, this team under Mikel Arteta seems to be able to get up for the big moments. It's the 
the moments after those that they where, where it's keeping it going. It's like me with my diet. Like I can diet my ass off for a period of time while I'm while I'm locked in. Mm -hmm. It's keeping it off. <laughs> yeah. So you know, beating these big teams or or putting in a really really good showing, like like on New Year's Day against Man City, uh, whether you win or not, <laughs> keeping that going by not losing to Everton to who were the three teams we just lost to over the last few weeks brighton well i was at two of the games brighton palace, palace. So um it's that where we struggle but in a one-off like mm -hmm. you know in the F in the fa cup his first year in uh, our series of one-offs in those kinds of games i i i, I put it to uh to Mikel arteta for being able to get his his boys motivated and and at least one of the games i think do we play away at uh New yeah newcastle yeah. and that's going to be tough the home game against everton i mean if that comes down to something mm -hmm. that crowd of which i shall be part is going to be ridiculous yeah um, well, well to be honest with you as well um i think that if there was ever a banana skin to slip on if you ever wanted to put it down to the cliche of classic arsenal i think today was probably that potential banana skin again against Leeds. Obviously, if you're if you're watching this <laughs> in the future, uh, morning work fly shit. But um, that that would have been the 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 banana skin for us to slip on today. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe it was the nerves of of, of watching it live. But <laughs> fuck, we we almost slipped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean that that the moment people start tweeting, and I and I you know I I, I usually when we score early, I I like to put out a tweet projecting how many goals a person could score in a game and and it was it was 18 goals that that Niketia was on pace for and as soon as all the tweets and I'm not blaming anyone we all were doing this and feeling this way as soon as people start talking about crooked scores and cricket scores and mm -hmm. and six nil and goal difference with the Spurs like I knew that that was negative karma for the world to be putting that out there and and I, I didn't know it would be as significantly uh like flat for the rest of the game but mm -hmm. you know what a, a win's a win this team is still learning how to how to win just like we're still learning how to pod but it, it, it's it's one of those situations i think again and not to dive too much into the arsenal <laughs> aspect of things or, we, 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 or, we don't want to undermine like like uh, when i wasn't part of a sunday roast a few weeks back uh mm -hmm. when danny went on with chris i, I ended up coming on because they were talking about arsenal too much i was like we yeah, have to, yeah. we, we have to get the, the subject back to <laughs> me <laughs> because, uh, <laughs> but the, know, this, the, this just i won't I, this won't do no absolutely not but this is the last thing i'll, I'll, I'll touch on um about the about the leeds match and i think that i think that if anything that situation of going down to 10 men so early on actually suited leeds and the way they wanted to play well not the way they wanted to play it forced them into to play the way that they probably should have approached the game originally which was backs to the wall defending we we, we as a team tend to struggle to break down teams with low blocks that are sitting in and I think that they've done that quite quite well um, once receiving that red card. So I think that, if anything, I think if there had been 11 men in the pitch, I would have expected the scoreline to be uh, much more flattering for Arsenal and, and maybe that the circumstances just fell right for Leeds and they were almost unlucky not to get anything out of that game. Yeah, I mean, a 2-2 would have, would have been a sucker punch. It would have felt deserved, though, mm -hmm. based on the way we, we approached that second half. But... Mm -hmm. A wins win. The team's still learning how to do it. So, uh, so, so that uh, I, I will take that. And as last night was a very late night for me with uh, with a little bit of of red wine, just a little. Um, I was pretty exhausted by the end of the game today, and I slept from eleven to four uh, mm -hmm. this afternoon. I can normally gauge from your WhatsApp. But... Missed the Sunday roast. So anyway, yeah, I'm, I can, I'm, I'm I, fresh, I can I'm only energized. gauge from your WhatsApp and your tweets as to how your night went. Speaking of which, I actually think I drunk <laughs> drunk dialed you maybe last week in the in it would have been your evening time, my middle of the night. Um, it was a Sunday here. Um, I don't know. I would have. Oh yeah, I, I would have. Yeah. I, I would have picked up. I would have no, picked you up, but man. you're lucky you didn't. I was this, really fucked up. <laughs> the, this was my evening last night, by the way. Um, this this gentleman on the left is a Tottenham fan. Let me just get that out of the way. Um, however, he is a very nice guy. He's a very good friend of mine. He's a gynecologist, which you know is pretty funny once you've had a few drinks to talk about stuff with. 
<laughs> and um, and that's Johnny Walker Blue right there, which is supposedly some really nice, uh, you know, scotch or whatever. I, I mean, I don't I don't drink it very often, but um, and yes, I did have to. I, I I cannot shoot eighty proof alcohol without gagging and almost puking, so I did have to to follow Johnny Walker Blue with with Diet Coke, and and I realized. <laughs> oh, and one well, and I didn't shoot it. I was drinking. You don't shoot Johnny Walker Blue. No. But, um, but yeah, so I broke all codes of being a man and, and drinking and that sort of thing. Uh, does he look like Chris Sutton? He does slightly. I've seen that comment. It made me chuckle. <laughs> it, it isn't a bad no, that's two reasons. Three reasons why he's a cunt. One is because he looks like Chris Sutton. One is because he's an, uh, a Spurs fan. And the other is because he touches them all day long. <laughs> that, that, it's funny because I what remember that, that used to be like quite a running joke when you were when we were young. It's like, what do you want to be when you grow up and gays, trying to be gays, you know, lad, lads, you know, oh, gynecologist, man. It's like, and now that I'm an adult and I see the type of women that are regularly attending the gynecologist on routine checkups, it's like, that's the last fucking place in the world they want yeah. to be, bro. <laughs> like, if you could have a gynecologist practice just for models yeah like the, that, yeah that would be you know i mean even if it were for, for porn stars it'd probably be a nightmare because you'd see you, like you'd, you'd have some trauma <laughs> you, you, the things that you'd see in that situation but like <laughs> <laughs> but i mean yeah it, it, it's well the weird thing it, the weird thing is how many of like okay i'm not gonna you know what i'm not gonna go into <laughs> That's, that's that's, he, he didn't agree to to have me talk that's about a, his job. Um, so, that's a whole you don't want to go down. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't want to start doxing my friends and personal <laughs> contacts and stuff. So, um, so today in the states is Mother's Day. Um, so fucked up. So I visited the mother's room last night. This was this was at the hotel where the bat mitzvah was that I was at. Uh, great party, fun time, and uh, mother's room. And I went in there looking for. For for your mother, for for hers's mother, I I mean I was very disappointed to not find any of any of them in there. <laughs> I was going to look for Andy's mother, but then I remembered that she had COVID, um, <laughs> and gave it to her whole family. So I don't really want to do that to Michelle. But um, so yeah, no mothers were in there whatsoever. That's so disappointing. It is. It is. It's very disappointing. But uh, there was one mother who I mean, when when you have an opportunity. <laughs> laughing at this sorry i'm laughing at this uh, gynecologist comment from uh from mark <laughs> so what he's saying pick and choose your clients and it's it's like what is it tinder where it's like <laughs> shit ugly yeah. fat checks or stuff it's like no you no, okay someone you shows up in the office for the appointment and you literally like move her to the left like, like <laughs> swipe her to the left <laughs> <laughs> like he's just sitting in the back with see now I'm sitting in the back with like a like a like a closed circuit camera of the waiting room and, and, and tells the tells the front desk person, Okay, cancel these three. These four can come in. <laughs> oh god. Uh, um, it's your so, call them, Mark. It's your call them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So uh, let me see. <clears throat> so this lucky woman, uh, I mean, when you have a chance to be my wife. You should take it because this is what you get. Like she doesn't need to bathe or shower now for the next, you know, two weeks. Um, I was feeling a little romantic. <laughs> Speaking of porn stars, um, so all right. So it is Mother's Day, and that's how I treated the mother of my children on Mother's Day. I should really be going to hell. Yeah, if I didn't um, know you or know her, but I would contact the police after seeing that photograph. That's uh... seriously. So, speaking of mothers, uh, Jared. Our good friend Jared from the Gooners podcast. First of all, a very serious uh, congratulations to Jared. He tied L knot yesterday, not the balloon knot, but the other one, um, with his lovely bride Caitlin. So uh, Caitlin Carver now exists, I would assume, uh, um, unless she's hyphenated. I don't know that much, but um, what better way to celebrate your nuptials? I don't know why. That's not a, that's not like a British soccer phrase. <laughs> and yes, I said that on purpose. Um, then to come to Nuri to visit, to visit to visit Ewan. I mean, did they plan that after they met you or before they met you? <laughs> His missus is a big, big fan of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no. multiple podcasts. She's going to visit all of them. She's going to Joe Rogan's house after the weekend. <laughs> Adam Carolla is on the list, and uh, and of course she's going to go visit Dan. First of all, before I go into the 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 backstory of how the fuck a, a dude from Chicago was coming to, to Newry, Northern Ireland, on his honeymoon, <laughs> um, <laughs> did you see the picture of Jared dancing? Man, Jared's got some fucking swag, dude. I mean, he's a he's, suave he's, motherfucker. He's he's so well put together in every way, mentally, emotionally, physically, <laughs> psychologically. <laughs> that 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 once we brought him on as a full time Gooners podcaster, we stopped doing the podcast because we essentially it was only downhill from there. Like it, like yeah, we, we didn't want to ruin the the concept of Jared <laughs> that we have in our head, but. Uh, yeah, no. So, look, I think originally the plan was, um, and we can dive into another part of this. This is so many tangents with this story. So, um, originally the plan was is that I would go to Dublin to meet Jared while he was here, but I had sort of overlooked the fact that my missus was is full t- going, which is full term pregnant at the minute. So it's literally That's so hot. A- any any time now. <laughs> yes, it, it is. No, it's speaking of gynecology. We're going to talk about that in more detail later. There's some stories to talk about there, but um, oh, that's another. One. But, yeah, no, we'll talk about that in a bit. But so, <laughs> I just, so I just, just pop it. Feel free, yeah. chat, to, to to add ideas. But I have a feeling we might not even need them today. Yeah, yeah, no. So originally, and then Jared said that uh, obviously the game we could sort of foresight that the, this game was going to be massive in the season. So we're like. You're only going to be 40 minutes away from from where I am. Would you fancy coming up? So he actually he, he booked a hotel right in the middle of the town. Me and him's going out. I'm going to take him down to a little lovely place called Carlingford, which is just across the border. Are you um, picking them up, or are they taking like a horse and carriage? No. Like, like how are they getting from Dublin? To, to, <laughs> there is no. They have to walk. <laughs> it's only 35 miles. It's fine. Um, no, he's getting a rental car, I believe. I don't want to give out locations. That was, that was Eminem's uh, follow-up movie. It was called 35 Mile. 35 <laughs> Mile. He, he skipped through 9 through 34 and went directly to 35 Mile. Yeah, yeah. No, so I'm going to take him out for a nice little dinner, and then I'm going to take him to um, the bar in which the, the Newry Arsenal Supporters Club runs out of um, a few of my mates that are Gooners are going to be out. So we're going to make a day out of it. Lucky Caitlin. I mean, yeah. I think that would be the one. I mean, my wife is is so patient with me uh, with this Arsenal stuff. I mean, like she she understands and and endorses my my travel uh, to a certain extent. Um, you know, the need to watch the game at nine a.m. on Mother's Day here uh, and all of that. But on my honeymoon with her, had we had that been part of the plan i'm not <laughs> sure we would be approaching our 25th anniversary next month well look in fairness and this is something that i will say uh, is that the first thing i said to jared when he said that he was coming to, to ireland on his honeymoon was and and no offense to anybody and even dublin gunner may may um back me up on this point was don't stay in dublin for the entirety of your honeymoon because Dublin is like Disneyland of Ireland, you know, it's very tourist attraction yeah. and stuff like that. But <laughs> it's like the, the poster of Ireland. Exactly. Yeah. So my advice to him was number one, go to Kilkenny because it's 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 phenomenal place in Ireland to go as well. But um the 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 other part of it is Newry is quite a small traditional town. And I think for I've had people from Australia over, I've had people from Norway over, I've had all these types of people, and they fucking absolutely love it because it's just like a proper little Irish town and the Irish bars and stuff and the scenery is really, really nice around it as well. So um no, I, I'd say she'll enjoy it too because I think it was actually her idea to come to Ireland because I think she has um Irish roots. So Caitlin, you would think the spelled the way that yeah, it's yeah. As soon as I seen her name, I was like, she's harsh as fuck. I do have to say, Kate, Caitlin spelled the way that that Jared's Caitlin is, and my mm-hmm. college girlfriend can attest to this. That was always the name that I thought that my like for some reason. I mean, it's you know, Jewish guy naming his daughter Caitlin. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know at that time that I would be marrying another Jewish person, but uh, mm-hmm. so so obviously Caitlin didn't fly. But that was kind of like my favorite name. Uh, for for a period of time of course now i prefer allison uh, <laughs> but uh but yeah um so nice name mm-hmm. so, um, see, see with so that, they're coming I mean, to Nuri. they're coming to Nuri. but even just i was going to talk to you on that on that of names and and 
chat box can can hit us up with your opinion on this. We were talking about names for for our, our Jew baby, of which we don't don't know which gender it's gonna be. Did you just say Jew baby? No, no, do like Jew, but we said Jew. It's you not. Literally just said we were talking about names for our Jew baby. <laughs> I'm like you this can, is a pretty loose podcast. This was on. a really, really quick conversion to Judaism. <laughs> either either like that, or either no that, or she wasn't the only one that came and visited me uh, last no. year in London. Big fan of bar mitzvahs, that woman. <laughs> She's... Jew baby. See, Danny heard the same thing. Jew baby. <laughs> yeah, um, but we're talking about so Ali. You call your daughter Ali, yeah. But was it always Ali? Because we, me and my missus were saying, like, there's a thing over here where people, like, call them Thomas John, and it's TJ. And it's like, yeah. fucking name your child TJ if you want to call him TJ, cunt. It's like, you don't have to give him some fucking TJ. stupid name. Oh, God. No, it, it, uh, hold on a second. I have to, the boss has asked me to, to stop the, uh, the ticker. <laughs> Although I know that my ticker will not be stopping anytime soon. Um, it was always, it was always Allison, and yeah, she just she came out, and I, I was like, she's an alley, uh, and it's with an I E at the end. Like so, uh, people always misspell like A L L Y. I mean, that's a word. That's ally. That's not you know, th that's not our daughter. Um, but yeah, A L L I E. That's always, you know. And she goes, she's starting to enter the, you know, she's a journalist. She's got bylines now in newspapers and and articles mm -hmm. and stuff. And I think. She's still using Ali for that. I'm, I, I I have to double check actually. Ali Feinberg's got a better ring to it, but it, it's the, the thing is over here as well. There's a big pressure on fucking people to name their children with traditional Irish names. But man, like look at the fucking state of that name that I like. I have felt that pain of how do you spell that e o e y? So like, so, so the child's name is not going to be wait you. Do we do we know and are we announcing uh, one way or the other whether you're having a boy or a girl? I'm I'm pretending. Oh, we, we, I don't know. I don't oh, know. You what don't, we're having. So you don't no, know. You don't know. Okay. No, we don't know. We don't so, know. So like, Eo and Ella, or nah. like, is there a, is there a female version of of uh, of of Owen? Ewing. <laughs> <laughs> like like the Just first four letters spelled the same, and then I N. Like it's almost a palindrome. <laughs> like, <you and> Iwi. <laughs> Oh, I, I actually like Don Juan's suggestion. What the hell is that? Chlamydia is Chlamydia. It, that's, it does yeah. sound kind of like a like intercontinental buttocks, like from, <laughs> like from uh, Monty Python. But chlamydia in a vacuum, mm -hmm. which I don't ever want to experiment with that. But chlamydia in a vacuum sounds like a pleasant name until you understand better what we keep coming back to gynecology um, <laughs> in, in this thing. I don't Speaking know of being probed. Um... Do you want to move on to that? Because that's something I've been really looking forward to break down with you. Yeah, this was a big week. I mean, big week for for uh, for Danny to 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 not be bigger, on the podcast. Bigger week for that doctor. <laughs> you know, um, I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, I do know what's not wrong with me, and that's anything in my descending lower and upper colon. Uh, but <laughs> why I felt the need to like tweet as many things as i did on on monday and tuesday something, I really... something i figured out about you mike and in, in our what two years of friendship is that when you get nervous you, you sort of publicize stuff more than you probably should i think that's pretty astute i i, I think that's a pretty good uh you know because it's one of these th it's like you know i make fun of myself so that no one else has to so i won't get hurt by it i mean you know it's the old kind of sad clown uh What's what was his name? Uh, Chris Farley kind of kind of uh, sensibility. I mean, it doesn't take a, a psychologist, and it's not a secret that uh, that that's why I'm so self deprecating. But um, but yeah, I guess you're right because like I was nervous about a, a. I'm having basically every medical test on demand, and it's not because I'm having any issues. It's just because I am basically not healthy and trying to get healthy. But I want to make sure like. I'm not already too far gone. And the good news is all my tests are coming back normal and stuff, but I'm just, I'm doing it all in one year because the way insurance works over here, if you just do everything in one year, it's a lot less expensive than, uh, than, than kind of spacing it out. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I was really nervous before my stress test. Like I had one of those treadmill stress tests. And for some reason like that's, cause I know a lot about medical stuff from, from my, 
my day job, my career. Like I know about other people's medical stuff mm -hmm. and you know, treadmill stress tests can be like when you, when they discover that things aren't right, when you, you know, you pass out, you have to be wheeled in immediately for surgery. And I was just like freaked out about that. Um, because my, you know, my dad, my, my grandfather both had heart disease and, um, and all I, all I posted about that was, I love you all. And people were like, <laughs> like right before I went in, I was like, I love you all. And people are like, are you okay? <laughs> Is something wrong? <laughs> This one, I just had to need to be completely transparent about, and and I, it's it's for education uh, of you know, I want people to understand as most as many of my friends are approaching fifty and they're getting ready for their first colonoscopies. I just, you know, I want to be a resource for the public to understand what's going on. So I tweeted videos of myself making the laxative mixture of freaking. I public privately circulated a video of. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> by the way speaking of speaking of jared accidentally clicking on my videos you should have known better but in, a, in our private chat is a video that i don't think i could i even i could possibly tweet out it, i don't want that out there in the world but yeah i know about it but talk, talk us through those those days leading up the prep so something are you awake for the procedure is that or, or no the, no the, but, the colonoscopy is really easy Pleasure. like like that's the easy part it's the did you prep yourself did you, like did you have a finger in the day before just to get yourself ready did, you know how do you know well, that your body is ready for that probing not by prescription but i i did it for uh recreation but no I, <laughs> <laughs> no the day before the prep is basically just to get everything out and they don't they it's uh it's just these these mixtures of of pills. Oh, here I'll show you. Not uh, don't worry. No one here will be seeing a picture of my anus, although I have them <laughs> because they send you pictures in the report afterwards. Um, I, I'm not going to be doing that. But this was the cocktail of of medicines that that they give you in the little prep bag. And the thing on the right is essentially this chalky white powder that you pour into a clear liquid. Now, if you drank that with water, you would puke all over the place because it's just so disgusting. But you put it in like <laughs> lemon lime Powerade. It has to be light some of, color. Some, some of the comments here are fantastic. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm on the picture screen, so I can't even see the comments and, and, and you can't put them up. So uh, <laughs> do they use lubricant or just do it raw? Spit. Um, <laughs> Thierry Henry or Mbappe, <laughs> like in the middle of discussing my anus. It's Thierry Henry. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, sorry. Um, you won't be getting any of those. And 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 Callum, I apologize. I, I'm I'm doing a but. There's normally two of us that could put the comments up, and it's just me tonight. But uh, so that that chalky. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like chalky and granular at the same time. It goes It goes into lemon lime. You can't have the red because the red will stay You're red. not still drinking it, are you? Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. This is just power. Just get <laughs> <it over. laughs> And you put it in there and it is, and you have to drink basically the equivalent of like three of these in an hour. And it sounds easy, but it no. tastes so disgusting. And then about two hours later, the floodgates open. <laughs> Daniel Roberts, did you ask the doctor to take their clothes off? Too? I expect that in even just office visit consultations. Yeah. I mean, much less surgery, but yeah. I love Callum's comment. <laughs> it's like, why are you guys talking so rude? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Danny's never, never spoken about bums or anything like that. Um, so... So yeah, so the day before, and the big cliffhanger, the big cliffhanger that we spoke about on last week's Sunday roast was, I realized that right in the midst of of the night before the colonoscopy, I had to be, I had to do my quote, I mean, had to is kind of a, a, you know, an exaggeration, but I wanted to do my PA announcing job for my son's, my public address <laughs> announcing job for my son's game, because I was thinking it was going to be my last opportunity to do it turned out i had i was able to do it on thursday night and we might even have one more game in the soccer playoffs um yeah, I, it's painful for me to say that but that's what that's what it's called and um and so i'm like well that could be a pretty difficult two hours to just 
stay in a booth and not be able to leave because I something could happen at any moment that I have to call. So I moved up the prep from the normal time, which was to start at five to like 11 a.m. And in the top three smartest things I've ever done in my life, <laughs> getting married, having kids, moving the prep from 5 p.m. to be, Because if you if you do the maths, 5 p.m., the game started at 715. So two and a half hours after I started the, the, the fluid stuff. Um, at 11 a.m. would not have been a good time for me to be, you know, in public mm. trap. I, there was discussion of a diaper that did not happen, uh, <laughs> of a nappy. Sorry, um, uh, no. So it was fine. Like I just, I, I mentally, physically, just prepared for 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 the situation, and and I got through it fine. Then I woke up at 4:30 in the morning, and it was just it started all over again. So, so uh, what does that actually physically feel like to be? Because that's something I've never experienced. You also, can't, you also can't eat anything. Like the yeah, only that's what I mean. Have... Like to actually to have completely clear. Like that's your. I mean, it doesn't. That? It doesn't feel great. It just feels like I'm tired. I'm weak. Um, you know, I could describe it visually, but I don't think anyone. No, needs that's that. fine. Yeah, don't worry about that. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is the video that I was talking. About. <laughs> I sent it to a few select people that I thought could possibly enjoy it, <laughs> and and I used the word enjoy very very uh, loosely. Speaking of loose, um, but yeah, so so that's the prep process. You wake up the morning of, you do one more round of this stuff just to make absolutely sure, and then you get to the hospital. And once you get to the hospital, it's all downhill from there, like in a good way. Like like they treated you right, they they bring you back. They I like kissed your neck and told you everything was going to be okay. They they did. They like they like blew in my ear. I mean the the services you can get when you have insurance <laughs> these days is great. Um yeah. But then they but the one the one hiccup in the whole thing was they could I have like bad veins apparently. They they could not put the IV into my into my arm. It took 3 people and about 45 minutes and a few like mal attempts of of getting it done uh before they finally got this so your, in. your nerves obviously you did, was a general anesthetic that you had to go under it's to... it's it's called twilight and like like you don't remember anything and you're sleeping but it's not general anesthesia there is but a what, what it's, you it, it's the stuff that that uh that michael jackson was using to get some sleep <laughs> until it gave him a little it worked much. pretty well yeah it worked pretty well um but is that what you were afraid of that the the risks of the anesthetic is that what you were nervous about yeah or? yeah i mean i wasn't nervous about the results of the colonoscopy i wasn't nervous, nervous about the, the process. fact that you may pass away from anal penetration the, yeah, that yeah. Was I your... mean, look what a way to go if that's where you're gonna go but that <laughs> that wasn't what i was worried about a large <clears throat> They did this in the hospital as opposed to what they call an ambulatory sur sur um, surgery center, which is like attached to the doctor's office because of how heavy I am and the sleep apnea that I have. Like, like you know, I sleep at night with a mask on that keeps me from, like, stopping breathing and stuff in the middle of the night. Um, but they couldn't do that during the surgery. So, they, you know, the tr it's a little trickier with anesthesia when you have a, a, a big fat guy with sleep apnea. So... They're like, we, we feel more comfortable doing it in the hospital, which in and of itself, that's the first time I've had four or five colonoscopies in my life because of a condition that I have. But like, um, that's the first time they're like, we need to see you in a hospital instead of the regular, you know, that's like, we need to have a piano, <laughs> a piano case ready to bury you in just like, <laughs> instead of the normal coffin. Uh, so, you know, that was a wake up call originally, which is part of the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm on this weight loss kick right now but it uh it was it, it was a little scary so yeah that that's that's really what my fear was was the anesthesia so waking up from that was like was awesome but yeah you go there you lie there you get on your left um you can hear people doing things you don't want to hear um <laughs> i also had an endoscopy which is the the one where they stick the tube in your throat as well so yes i they, hope they've done that in a particular order <laughs> And with different equipment. Yeah, well, the different equipment part. Yeah, the, it, that that is true. But uh, this is where's oh, I don't think I uploaded the picture of the of the pig on the spit roast. <laughs> but that's <laughs> that's how I probably looked uh, at the time uh, while they were working. I've on seen it, some but... videos in my time that can make me imagine what one 
was oh, open there. That's yes, right. on uh, on Gastro Pub, Gra- <laughs> or no, sorry, Gastro Hub. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so so yeah, it was a very pleasant day. But but by the time uh, by the time it was all over, let's see, this is the before picture. Um, every single one of those wires was was going into my body, I believe, <laughs> uh, <laughs> in various different places. And then uh, this is this is me waking up like three minutes after waking up from anesthesia. Of course, I'm like, as soon as as soon as they bring Steph back, I'm like, Steph, can I have my phone? Like I wasn't, I wasn't even like, oh, I'm so happy to see you. I love you. It's can I have my phone because I have to tweet to. <laughs> Seven and a half thousand people who don't respond to my tweets ever. I just really like the fact that seven thousand people have me muted <laughs> on Twitter. I had to tweet this out to. Apparently, a, a microscopic tube up your arsehole eliminates the possibility of you spreading coronavirus. <laughs> the, the, the the first one with your mask and the second one without. Jesus, some consistency here, guys. Well, this yeah, in the recovery room they uh, <clears throat> they they did without the mask, but yeah. Um, yeah. It ain't microscopic. Let me just tell you that. Is it right, not? So, 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 so I lived. The results were fine. I'm, I'm all good, uh, as far as I know, uh, in those ways. But, uh, you know, for anyone who, who tuned in on and didn't end up tuning out the moment we started talking about it last Sunday, just wanted to give the, the final update, which is, uh, it went about as. Oh, and here I wanted to. Wanted to read where oh, I don't have it. I was going to read the report from the colonoscopy, <laughs> specifically the part that said preparation was excellent. So I got good grades. I'm really yeah, excited yeah. about that. Nothing I love more than positive affirmation from <laughs> a guy sticking a tube in my mouth and anus at the same time. <laughs> and and this is like this makes me feel bad because look how lovely Kate Johnstone is. First, putting up with this, and second, glad it all went well. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like the rest of people are, you know, the, the dudes in the room are, are are just being crude, and 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 oh, there's one that I uh, there's one that I meant to put up that I didn't. Oh, this one from Sai Anvesh. How does this happen? Do you spread your legs, or were you standing and they do it from the below? I don't think standing. The would doctor work well just lays flat on the back on the ground and makes you squat. Over. No, well, the the real answer is you you're lying on a like a gurney or whatever you want to call it on your left hand side fetal um, position fetal position on your left hand side but like i love the, the concept of were you standing because like imagine like okay we're putting in the anesthesia and now i'm just like <laughs> <laughs> oh. and then no. mark mark with two questions back to back uh what does it feel like to shit yourself i don't know and what would you do with Pepe after buying? <laughs> <laughs> this is I why I love this podcast because it's kind of like about Arsenal and it's really kind of not. Uh, yeah, Kay, I'm used to it now listening every Sunday. It, the fact that you listen every Sunday and and are still here uh, to live to tell the story is is makes my the cockles of my heart warm. Have you got a Have you got a good put yourself story? Have you? No. I no. well no uh, I don't have a good story I have stories <laughs> but none of them are good <laughs> I take it by that question that you do though oh <laughs> and I'm gonna take this opportunity to turn the fan on above me because it's hot in here but go go ahead yeah I, no it, it isn't so much it's I know I know you have a good story that's just that's just waiting to just burst out like <laughs> unexpectedly it's it, it isn't as much a, a poo yourself story it's I've, I've only ever sharded once in my entire life and. It was on my my senior managerial debut, <laughs> so <laughs> I was like took over a man senior side. I'd been playing for a long time, and I decided just that with a young child and and the insurance situation over here and stuff, I didn't want to risk me put myself at risk of breaking my leg and taking time off work or whatever. So I went into management, and everything was going really well, perfect, and building up to a game and made a couple of good signings for the, for the club and stuff, and um. There we go. We're standing on the sideline, and I was really nervous, man. You know, and when I get real nervous, I get slippery bowels. <laughs> so we we're playing really, really well, and then all of a sudden, on the counter attack, we're broken. Bang! Ball hits the back of the net, and I'm going to celebrate and go yes, and just as it tense up, it just goes whoop. 
that I go, oh no. <laughs> Was it crowning like your wife is going to be in a, in a week? Or no, nah, it wasn't. It was, there was no sol- solidarity. So, say that word for me, Mike. Solidarity. Yeah, to it. It, it was a. Uh, it yeah. was in liquid form, but it was a. Uh... <laughs> I love what about the show is named after a meal as well. Like, like, like that's, that's even worse. What about you, Mike? Have you ever? Not that, yeah, and I wasn't, I wasn't denying it's ever happened. I just was was saying there's no like one singular story that would be as wonderful there's as that. Multi- multiple. I will say, I will say that early on in the former friendship uh, between myself and Lee Gunner, he did announce to a WhatsApp group that he, uh, as he called it, followed through. Is that the is that the uh, the the saying over there? It was the Ooh. first time I'd ever heard that said before. Um, but, uh, he, he was just gleefully talking about how he had followed through that morning, which, uh, <laughs> which, which is what you've called. But, I'm, but... but no, but I'm really blown away. Uh, th- no, there's a difference between following through on a short. Okay. There's, there, there's fine lines here. Let's not, let's not walk over the top of them, but well, please, please educate because we, I know we've got some Americans in here. Uh, Mar- uh, Mark is here from, uh, from green Bay. Asking if dueling panjos was playing, and the answer is, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I know uh, uh, we, the eight mile comment earlier from Ryan Youngblood, who lives near Eight Mile, actually um, in in uh, Detroit. But so I'm very so. There's three of us at least, if not more. I'm very interested in learning the difference between sharding and following through. Okay, this is so what we. This is what Arsenal podcasts really need to be focused on. It's like do you know with. Um your hanky panky time you've got bases you use americans love doing this oh, i got the third base with this check and shit like that yeah well there's bases there's bases this this shit no one can agree no one can agree what the bases are either like, like no no you can like, tell well, how much of a pervert a person is by what they consider the bases yeah yeah <laughs> Like for some people, third base is like shitting on a glass table and having someone lie underneath it. Whereas for others, uh, it's what do you just call hand, that? Hand action. <laughs> <laughs> well, number so if if number five, if fifth base is full blown shit in your pants, there's first no base, fifth base. F- first base would be sharding. The following through would probably be second or third base. That's where like poop. Solid and fifth, fifth base is fifth base is I have a log in my in yeah my shorts yeah yeah fall out whereas, of the side of them at any time which, which would yeah be. whereas shorten is simply just like a little bit of a little accent like like a little sprinkle like like if yeah. we're putting this in cooking terms it would be like, <laughs> like salt bay with it <laughs> exactly all right we we have. We we have to get off this subject. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know we went. I I know um, you probably your eyes are probably playing tricks on you. There are sixteen people in the chat right now. We had four hundred and thirty two before we started talking about my colonoscopy. <laughs> uh, but uh, um, Daniel wants to ask a serious question. Have at it, man. And I have a feeling it's not even serious. But let's let's use this time while Daniel. Uh, uh, That's his question. Well, okay. So we've got uh, shout out to the chat. We've got Kate, of course, in here. Uh, Mark Bacreden, uh, Daniel Robert, Ryan Youngblood, uh, Mark Mertz, from uh, who I'm going to be seeing in a couple weeks over in London. Uh, can't wait for that. Danny the GFP, up for up for chatting, not up for potting. And uh, as a result, Danny, I hate to tell you this, but uh, this is Ryan's favorite episode. So um, what do you... There you go. There's the, there's the. Uh, what is that called? A, did you just dab? I believe is what it's called. Nice. Yes, it's a dab. dab. Okay. Um, Very dab is, Dabbing is is equivalent to third base on the shark scale. By the way, <laughs> got Ryan Fletcher in the house. Uh, Loki, Callum Barton, Cy Anvesh, I think uh, might have said. But uh, thanks to everybody so far that's joined us in the chat for a fun night. Now here. Is Daniel's question mashed potato or roast potatoes for a roast? Now, would you call Daniel what what I had uh, when we were together in uh, Borumwood? A that that wasn't a roast; that was just a steak, right? Because I had had a roast earlier in the evening at this pub where I talked about it a week or two ago on the Sunday roast, where like I just walked in and did not look like I fit in whatsoever. Um, I had the worst steak of my life with Daniel Robert that night, but I'm going. <laughs> 
I prefer well, Coach Daniels as the company or the food. Yes. Um, I, I prefer, <laughs> well, to be honest, Daniel, lovely guy, but like oh, he, he, like that evening, he had some relative of coronavirus that he, I mean, he was coughing and sniffling all throughout <laughs> our meal. And I'm like, I'm like, bro, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you came to meet me. I really am. And this is fun. And I like you a lot, but like you're, I'm, I'm going to see Danny in two days. Or no, I went to see Danny the next day, and I was like, you're going to kill two people. <laughs> so he still has the cough. Uh, yeah, you might want to get that checked, because that's that was, uh, what, six months ago? <laughs> Daniel, however, did not enjoy his company whatsoever. I prefer mashed potatoes, but in the roast setting, I think the, you, they have to be the roast potatoes, right? I mean... I- <clears throat> I'm Irish. I think I can speak. This is this is if there was ever a fucking topic for me to come into my own. True. Yeah. This I, mean, is you, it. I would think <clears throat> between being Irish and, and and them being called spuds, uh, you would not enjoy uh, mashed potatoes, as we call them. Right. Do you want to know what I'm going to throw? It, and this isn't fan sitting here, okay? Um, but I would have both with the roast. We're Irish. Say what you want. Make your jokes. But the fuck is any work. any form of potato. Do you want to know what? I would go as far to have three. I would go have um, croquet potatoes. Uh, I would have mashed potatoes, and I would have roast potatoes as well with turkey, ham, stuff, and some veg. Yeah, that's 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 what we're now is it about. now is it ham or gammon? No, well, see, you can't really say ham because you use Americans fuck it fuck up ham, don't you? It's like bacon. You say it like this bacon. is ham right here. This is, uh, I actually have. My kicking person just has ham to ham. What kind of, what kind of show is it? Well, it's the one, yeah, it's the one. I mean, you could have talked about any. I, I'm surrounded. You can't see this because of the camera angle. I'm surrounded by various foods, kind of like uh, like it, like I'm in a in a kitchen. But I because I because I napped from 11 to 4 and then struggled to put the show together, um, I did bring up cantaloupe, which has been eaten, and, and some slices of ham. So... <laughs> This is your full service podcast. I'm literally in my kitchen. <laughs> I'm not as close <laughs> and you to don't have, And you don't have re- foods ready to bring up. And ca- this is the Sunday roast, dude. <laughs> I wasn't going to eat it on camera, but since you brought it up. <laughs> There's a lot of fat on that ham. No, no, no. It's 97% fat free ham. <laughs> oh, that is good ham. Did they cut that, cut that fresh ounces. in store? 50 calories for two ounces and two ounces is a few slices so like this is one of the things that i can actually eat that's substantial that won't make me fat so now, so see, see after the colonoscopy and on and, and your your health work up now so it's funny um, because like my 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 father-in-law he um he loves a drink like he he loves pints and loves i love the, the chat's reaction to the fact that i had ham on it. <laughs> it's amazing i'm still a- they're gonna start bringing things up and like like <clears throat> Like, do you have a globe near? <laughs> <laughs> like, look, it's gonna be this list of like, what does it's like? Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? It's like, what in the what in the fuck does Mike have on his desk? <laughs> That's Pasham, Kate, Kate Johnson. Is Kate? Where's Kate? Kate from? It's Kate, Kate from here. You, Kate, where are you from? It's like that's no Iceland ham. Do you know I'm gonna, that has, I'm gonna say uh, Kate she's from English. Scotland. No, I don't know why, um, but. Uh, but yeah, I just said uh, anyway. Yeah, what I was saying is my father in law is um he likes a drink and he goes for like regular checkups because he's like 73, 74 now. But they scan his liver and every time he comes back and it's clear, it's like a cl- it's it's an all clear for him to go and keep drinking or drink even more. So now that you have this checkup and you're all clear, is this like a, a license for you to fuck around for another while or no well the old me would have looked at it that way. And I have to admit I I um Ah, see, I must have known this. I'm not, I, I must have known this. Oh, um, just, thank Fox is not English. <laughs> I was right. She's Aberdeen. She's... Former, for, uh, there was some coach that used to coach there. I think he went on to coach some other United type team uh, from Aberdeen. But um, Ham, I, I sense a bit of sarcasm in, in John uh, John's post here. Ham is health food. This form of ham is fairly healthy very lean protein uh i have had four takeaways in four nights 
Don't talk. The ham's healthy as fuck. Yeah, the uh, I mean, ham on a ham and cheese sandwich, or oh. you know, the, that's that's a different story. But I did go a little like like in a non carb way. I did go a little crazy on Tuesday night when I got home from the colonoscopy. I had like like a steak waiting, and uh, I mean, I this week's been a little bad from the uh, caloric intake, but because and, and the colonoscopy, like being without food for thirty six hours and completely cleaning out like that I, I did kind of go a little crazy on the food and in a controlled manner of not having like bread and carbs and stuff but um but yeah i i can't do that though anymore because then i'm gonna just put all the weight back on that i've lost there's a comment from loki he says don't eat ham pigs look like people what the fuck type of people are you hanging around with <laughs> Loki hangs out with round pink men who who only know one word apparently, um, you know. And uh, pigs are very intelligent creatures, and how could you not when you're smart enough to go into my mouth? But uh, oh, Ryan brings up a good point, which is no late night pizza in Orlando. Now I know Orlando, Florida, doesn't come across as a place that like would be renowned for its pizza, but they have a New York pizza joint that Aston. Our, our good friend Aston from the pod, Ryan, Alyssa, and I went to, um, and I I think I had an orgasm during the pizza eating. I probably had my Aust- eyes closed. Aston's a really nice guy. <laughs> like like, well, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't him. <laughs> that pizza was ridiculous. It was basically like sitting in a in a proper pizza place in New York or something like that. It was amazing. And yeah, I do remember that night. Um, started on a podcast, and then we went down to. Uh, then I, they were staying in the same hotel, so like, like you know, like some sort of, uh, what was it a uh, like 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 an escort or something? I went, I, I I moseyed down to the bar in the in the hotel where I met a very nice couple who invited me into their marriage for the evening. Um, but uh, I mean, look, a, a man can hope. But yeah, the uh, no, that was a very nice evening that ended with orgasmic pizza. Yeah, this so, is the, so, this so, is the tangent. Uh, oh no, you got a tangent. I had, I had a I had a topic, but no, 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 no. I'm saying we've now gone off on a tangent because okay. you mentioned ham, and I and I just had some <laughs> nearby. Yeah, I can't even remember. Oh, we were talking about the roast dinner thing, but anyway. Oh yeah, let's talk. Let's oh, talk whether about ham and gammon and that sort of stuff was. Let's uh, talk about this because it's a sort of serious topic and mildly arsenal well it is it is arsenal related this uh the angel by louis yeah, dunford that was on my list the, of things to the talk song about. what what do you make of it what do you reckon people are saying it's too forced people are saying they love it where, where, where are you falling on it here are the um here's how i handle situations like this when something gets so famous so quickly I resist it from the point of view of like, like I have not listened to the song yet. Now, really? did, did, did I hear it playing, you know, before and after the game? Yes. Do I like the concept of it? And like, do I, do I think that we need kind of an anthem like that? Yeah. Do I feel like it's forced? Not in a way that really puts me off that much. I mean, I, I, I think it's needed if it was to like mm-hmm. replace a tradition with a new one, then that would be a different story. But you know, traditions have to start somewhere, and we really have no pre or post game song traditions. Mm-hmm. And 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 I'm not, I'm not going to cry about Sweet Caroline going away. Trust me, that that's that's horrendous, and it's not exclusive to Arsenal either. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so I like the concept of it, but I have yet to sit down and actually listen to the song. It's, it's and I don't know why because I'm not a. See, I think a, I, I, I think protest. I think it's, this is the thing as well. I think that it, it's a. It's a particular taste in music type of thing. It's like, uh, for example, if you like uh, the Arctic Monkeys, if you like Oasis, if you like sort of British indie sort of type music, I think that you, you you like the song. I love the song. I really, really like the song. But if it's not your cup of tea, I just don't think that you're going to like it very much. But um, it's, it's kind I of like it. slow, and a lot of people don't like that it has ours, that it doesn't say anything about Arsenal. But I don't, I don't think that that's a problem. I mean, it's it's not meant to be. Uh, a football no, but in the, the, the song in its entirety it does speak about Highbury and stuff like that as well and uh, you know but um i really like the fact as well that it came from a dude who had as many twitter followers as as most of us and um, being the keyword <laughs> yeah and now he's up to 
you know, 25k. And by all accounts, everything I've seen from him, he looks like a really, really seems nice like a lovely guy, guy who yeah. isn't letting this go to his head. He, nah. He's he's just enjoying the ride, and you know, things like that can turn into you know, okay, enough already of you. But like, I don't see that happening with this guy. I think, uh, I think he he'll essentially donate his song to Arsenal Lore. And not try to you know be, become a big deal about it. I and, I, and say, I, think I, think say. I just I just want to know how long I can go without listening to it. It's almost like a like a self a challenge at the minute. Yeah, yeah, there's a there's a challenge on the radio over here um, at Christmas time, and you have to make it through the entirety of December without hearing uh, "Last Christmas" by George Michael, and it's a <laughs> fucking mission. Oh. Like like if you walk like like you you have to approach like a waitrose like really carefully in case they're yeah. playing it inside or something like that yeah i i, I got That's fucking last i got last christmas um on christmas eve um this year uh avoiding shopping centers and stuff but back to the song um i imagined in i uh, think it was it the the tgt whatsapp group that i reckon that potentially because louis dunford hasn't really done any media he hasn't done any podcasts yeah, loads, yeah, loads of shit. i reckon that potentially that that the all or nothing series with amazon have approached him about that potentially being the intro music to it maybe the it's you know oh, the, that's, the, the, that's definitely uh the chorus which, which look for a guy like him in the situation he's in i'm sure he i don't want to make any judgments but i know that um during your early days in the music industry that money can be a, a bit of a shitty shitty thing so for a dude like that to potentially get a decent payout for uh, for something like that, there it's only good, you know what I mean. You'd have to be an ass. So you're saying if, if you're him, you take a payout from Amazon over talking on as a guest on the Gooners podcast for 14 people. Um, <laughs> that's the decision you make. I mean, no. Well, uh, I didn't want to break it. We've exclusively got Louis Dunford next week on the Good. No, I don't know, not at all. But uh, no, I'm sure that look, there's a reason why he's not speaking to media. He's a pretty in demand dude at the minute, and seemingly a lot of high profile people in in the podcast and on media industry have reached out to him with well, no it's, response. It's, it, it is almost figuratively and literally like a person who wins the lottery like you don't want to just plaster your face all over press mm-hmm. you become a you become a target you you can ruin it by saying something you know if you're not media trained or you know trained in double speak and 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 that sort of thing i mean it's there's a reason that he's not doing interviews and i think you you're probably nailed on uh as to what that is but mm-hmm. um but yeah it's I, I like anything and 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 who said this to uh just now kate as usual with the great comment it was good to hear everyone singing together to me and this is you know this sounds cheesy and idealistic but anything that binds people together and there's always going to be a few people like danny who uh who who rail against it or who think it's forced and that sort of thing and and you're entitled to your opinion about that but like it's if it brings people together if it is something that you know and i heard um i think i think it was amanda who who tweeted that like the club should really publicize it more in the moment as what as to what it is because you know a lot of people match going fans and that sort of thing don't have twitter they don't they're not aware of the buzz that's been happening over the last week over this. And they were a little bit confused. Like how, why are, you know, 60% of the people in the stadium singing this song that I've never heard before. Like it's something I should have learned about, like maybe in the program see, or, see, 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 or on the big screen or the words or something like that on the stream, which, you know, again, that might be a little bit forced, but it was a good point. It made me realize that, you know, not everyone <laughs> was, was just constantly ambushed, in a good or bad way with information about this song and and the story behind it and how it came to be played at the Emirates. So there were a lot of confused people in the stadium probably. But it wasn't really forced. I don't think you really look at at, like, I don't even think Arsenal posted out the song in its entirety. I don't even think they posted the song whatsoever. um, Previous prior to, to today. Um, I think it was really um, James McNicholas from Gunner blog and Charles Watts, were probably the two most high-profile people I've seen posting it, and then obviously that gained traction. Axe players like Gilberto Silva posting it out like that. So Arsenal really didn't push it whatsoever. They didn't have the guy standing on the halfway line doing a live performance. Which, which which was smart. That would have been. I mean, yeah, I've seen a video this forced. morning of 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 him, like like 
an edited video. Well, I've seen one yeah. from someone who was standing right below where he was taking a video yeah. of him, like a home, like a personal video. And then I've seen one official one that shows like, you know, the, the players in their huddle and the okay. songs in the background. And then it goes to him standing. Uh, right yeah. And I've seen people taking pop shots at him over, over that video, but look, put yourself in that guy's position. This is an up and coming musician, a, a lifelong Arsenal fan by all accounts, someone from the local area who went and read <clears throat> a song that I've seen a video of him, going to perform in front of people from North London to a crowd of maybe about 300 and he was really nervous about even doing that and within a couple of weeks you're standing in the Emirates Stadium with the majority of the the, the stadium singing along to your song I'm sure that's that, that that's a massive I mean, he, for that he, kid. he's on track to become Oasis essentially uh <laughs> the London's Oasis uh no, I mean, I look, I, I, I don't have a negative thing to say about it. I, and, and if it's something that, I mean, look, I'll be in the, in the stadium for Everton. So if they're still doing that, and, and it's pick, you know, even picked up, mm -hmm. I, I think over the next, well, that's the next home game and the last home game. So I'm sure it'll be played there again, and we'll see if it grows as far as like people knowing what it is, what it's about, and participating, or if it starts to burn out a little bit. Um, and how it carries over the summer will be interesting, but I just I think I think it's here to stay, and I think it's a good thing, and I'm excited to. I mean, that will be the first time I think that I've, that I'll have heard it in its entirety uh, yeah. while I'm at the stadium, and I think that's cool. So, mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, Mark Mark agrees with your point that 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 he will be on Amazon whether mm -hmm. they in some shape or form, yeah, whether they start it with that because it wouldn't chronologically make a ton of sense uh to start it off with that given when it happened in the season but um basically unless he takes credit for for making the top four for arsenal i i don't find, find any kind of problem with the guy so mm -hmm. um i'm glad you brought that up i wanted to i wanted to talk about that so daniel roberts says i know this is not the gunner spot but when is the fa cup of english races it has been a while since we did that we tried to do it. I tried to do it while I was in London in August, in October, and it absolutely fell flat because my internet connection at that absolute bitch's uh, uh, flat in, in Highbury uh, didn't work, and it worked even worse when I was on the floor sitting amongst the, the shards and pieces of broken chairs. <laughs> but uh, it is going to come back. Uh, I'm excited to do it. I'm trying to get some very special people to participate in it. Um, and it could potentially have to wait until the next 24-hour podcast, uh, which would, you know, again be in probably late July, early August. So, uh, so within the next few months, it'll happen, if not sooner, depending on whether I can get specific guests that I want to comment on this uh, to to do it. So, um, for those of you that haven't seen it, it's an annual bracket tournament of. Uh, of basically things that make me go like this, uh, which is, you know, sixes and sevens, diabolical, pony, like things that you hear having to do with football in England that no one in the States or anywhere else would ever say. It just wouldn't, it's just not part of our normal parlance. Uh, but I absolutely love these phrases. And I, and we have a panel of people who essentially vote for who's going to advance in each round. And, uh, and we end up with, uh, with a big winner. So, um, you know, uh, Alyssa has already snuffed me out. She's she she's one of the special guests um, that I've been working on. I've talked to her people. I've talked to her agents. Uh, one of her agents recently passed away. You may have heard it on, uh, on the news. Um, and so she's, you know, her her situation is a little in flux. But um, but yeah, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for asking. A um, couple other things that. Oh, so senior night for my son is it's the last home game of the of the football season and his team this season has been like it's been really odd in the sense that there's a good talented group of boys that just they're they have a a, a new coach this season not the same coach as last season um which is great because jake's actually getting playing time that he deserves from this new coach recognizes hard work and and, and talent um and um and senior night is like the culmination of the season where everyone who's a senior and going off to university next year uh gets kind of honored with their family and stuff and they were playing against they they've recently pulled together and started pressing hard and playing as a team and and they beat the best team in the in the region 
a couple weeks ago in a thrilling 2-1 game. And then this was against the second best team, a team they lost to 4-1 a couple weeks ago. And needless to say, they were inspired. Uh, it was nil-nil at halftime. Jake scored a phenomenal volley off of a corner kick at the beginning of the second half. Uh, and then they went on to, to score a second about 30 seconds later off a free kick. Uh, it was one of those where, where the goalie saves the free kick and then there's one guy who had the presence of mind to make the run to follow it. And it was a tap in for him at that point. Um, and then, uh, and then one of Jake's old teammates in youth soccer who played for the other team scored. So it was another two, one victory. Uh, but just to share some, some photos from the evening, they had the little things made of, <laughs> of each scene. Here. <laughs> That's my, that is, Oh, and I'm, I'm doing you a favor here. I'm showing you a picture of my mom. <laughs> And my oh, stepfather, Miss Feinberg. That well, no, it's it's formerly Miss Feinberg. First, she was uh, she was Miss Rosen. Uh, no, first she was Miss Hirschberg. Then, when she married my dad, she became Mrs. Feinberg, and then she became Mrs. Ruff because she kind of veered off the Jewish path for for one of her <laughs> marriages. And now, Doctor Rosenberg is uh, so so. Now she's Marcia Rosenberg. It's her third Berg out of four. She's seven. She's batting seventy five percent on the Bergs for, for yeah. her last name. But uh, but that's them holding me, uh, holding Jake, whose head was on a stick, which is a little weird to think about. Um, what else do we have from that night? Um, I feel like there was another picture, but anyway, um, great night. I did get to call the game. It's very exciting to announce a goal in the midst of like the excitement and the crowd going crazy when it's your son who scores it. Like I just, I, that, that's the reason I wanted to do this was a, because I, I love being in front of a microphone and see, hearing the sound of my own voice, but B just being able to like build the excitement and stuff when my son scores a goal. It's, it's, it's really awesome. And uh, yeah, you seem to be enjoying that one. This time I had like, like a couple of the parents have asked, like, even though your son's graduating and he's moving on, will you do this again next year? Which was kind of tickled me a little bit. And the answer is I probably would. Yeah. Um, I added a few things each game. Like I put, I, I had like that Gary Glitter, like anthem, like, -na -na -na. Na -na. not the other Gary Glitter uh, things, but I had that play. E each time they scored, I rock and uh, roll part hit, two. Yeah, rock and roll part two. I hit that and, and then announced the goal. It's, it's, it's pretty fun. I enjoy mm -hmm. it. But, um, Last night was prom. Yeah. Do you, do you have prom over there or something? No, we call them formals. Formals. I have another good story about that as well. I was only ever, I went to an all boys school, so we didn't have a formal, but I went to a girl's Why formal. Not? <laughs> and I don't know. I, it's pretty fucked up. I don't know. It's Catholic school, man. They're not into it. But um, they do it when we're 16, everyone gets real fucked up. And we were walking back and my mate was taking a piss into the canal and I tried to jump over the wall to scare him, but I clipped my foot on the way over the wall and fell into the canal oh, in, in, a, in a suit. <laughs> and it was a rental. I didn't even wash it. I just threw it into the tumble dryer and, and dried it off and returned it. It must have stank like shit. Yeah. And then you followed through. Uh, <laughs> Mike her is saying someone should give Jake the arm bar. Absolutely. Um <laughs> Mark saying, "Well done to Jake." You know, I'm I'm just I'm living vicariously through him at this point. I'm living vicariously through both myself and him right now. Um, he's just having a great time right now. Like these are the days of your life where where you just want your son to enjoy them. You know, senior year is going off to to uni next year with a bunch of people that he knows and 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 will make new friends there and stuff. But he's he's thriving. He's co goal scoring leader on his team with seven. Uh, for the season and and then prom last night took some pictures uh let's see there's the stud with his date his lovely uh girlfriend sam and then uh and and then this is called three beautiful people and a beast <laughs> <laughs> this is at uh jake's friend kareem's house this is not our this is not our foyer uh this is theirs but uh bunch of spiffy looking people and then and and me this is where i get a little artsy here look at that he's super american looking jake and he like like he should be i mean he's american 
<laughs> no, but you, you know what I mean. It's American like, as fuck. I mean, like it, if the American pay you stand holding one of them fucking red cups. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the that's the group. The the uh, that's a brave and, choice of suit down at the front. Yeah, that's, that's Kareem. That's his. That's his. That's his. Uh, his bestie, and uh, yeah, he went. He went with the daring suit choice, and, and it worked. For him. Energy, he, yeah, he that. pulled it off, and 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 I mean in a lit- in a figurative way. Um, but yeah, that's the crew. They're all footballers. Uh, four out of the five of them are on the team, um, and uh, so it was a nice group. They had a big like limo, not 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 like a a, a limo limo, but like a limo bus, mm-hmm. and they're like obviously that was the best part of the night was the limo and they you know they took the limo from the house they drove down into the city they went to like the lincoln memorial took pictures down there uh weather was shitty last night but uh but they had fun so you know he's just he's going through those stages in his life and i absolutely just the fact that he took two two weeks out of this period of his life to spend with his dad gallivanting around europe uh is even more special when you look at how much fun he's having here so uh, yeah called Deb- believe he doesn't drink he doesn't won't touch it Deb's down south yeah um yeah yeah it's just it's which makes him going on a trip with you for two weeks even more impressive <laughs> i know well i i was pretty be- i mean there were two or three nights that he pretty much was laughing at me and taking videos of me uh you know, but but the other nights, not you know, it wasn't so bad. It was pretty much the two Arsenal games and the Dortmund game uh, were, were 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 pretty significant. But what happened on August twenty fifth? What am I missing here? Don't make you don't make me call you out for August twenty fifth. August twenty fifth is the day before a wedding that I'm going to, but I can't think of what else that that would represent. Um, so maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe uh clarify that a little bit so check my diary so yeah um so yeah good good things going on and then the and then the the, the bat mitzvah last night we had a very it was kind of like a very so, jewish ex- day ex- yeah explain to me the the rules of this because it was what do you call it a yarmulke what what is it yeah what, yeah call it well, very good it's called a yarmulke. Thank you. i'm uncultured cultured as fuck um <laughs> so when do the oh, yarmulke, yarmulke as fuck go on by where was your yarmulke what well you wear it kind of not not right on the top of your head it's not like a like a beret <laughs> believe it or not i do not have one near within arm's what reach what kind of fucking jewish guy are you man yarmulke on demand wait wait hold on a second you're eating ham yeah that's how you know look <laughs> you can't tell you can't tell me what to do <laughs> You're the one. I'm having ham. You're the one having a Jew baby. If you missed the beginning of the podcast, Owen is having a Jew baby. Uh, you're gonna have to go back and listen. <laughs> so uh, yeah. By the way, uh, Danny, uh, as much as I I would like to be doing this podcast with you tonight, and we uh, pretty good substitute, I have to say, uh, for for one evening. But yeah, the I have a ham yamak. <laughs> <laughs> for your viewing pleasure here's my ham yarmulke Hamica. yeah um, so what, what, what's the rules with the the yarmulke is it like certain situations you have them on yeah you're supposed to have, wait, you're supposed to wear it when either you're doing a prayer like if you're at home and you're lighting candles and doing a prayer or or you know the there's prayers over wine and bread and and uh and ham uh <laughs> so you're supposed to wear it then and then when you're in the temple if you're in a synagogue which is where the morning part of a bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah is held you you wear uh, you wear a yarmulke and if you have been bar mitzvah yourself you all you also wear something called a talus which is like a like a shawl kind of thing that you wrap around and yeah no you don't wear a shawl over here that's di- di- different different members of the community wear shawls over here like it's yeah. pretty tense well and for people like orthodox jews wear their yarmulke all the time so if you if you see somebody like on the t- on the tube um or or um you know walking around london or or new is york this, or wait, anywhere is this like the shit in yourself base again where there's like bases of a base of judaism yeah it, it, yeah, it's, it is kind of like that, but yeah, the Orthodox Jews 
or Hasidim um, are it's almost another religion altogether. Like like I don't recognize like the similarities between Orthodox Judaism and like conservative or reform Judaism, which is kind of where we fall in. It's uh, I mean, it's it's like night and day. It's it's you know, it's closer to Islam, really. Like like in many ways. I mean, that not to go down this rabbit hole, but Judaism and Islam are so similar. It's like like. Obviously, there's so I many, think the reason there's so okay, many differences I, and there's battles over homeland and stuff, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into, that. into that. Yeah, yeah. But, but, I, but I think the whole thing where, are more than the, than the differences. I was brought up obviously um, in Ireland as a as a Catholic, and obviously went to Catholic school and stuff. And there's that whole stigma around you know Catholic priests and altar boys and stuff. And I strayed away from religion in, in my teenage years because upon some reflection, I was looking back and I thought, I can't be religious. I mean, like, I didn't even get touched. That's like, how can you be an altar boy? Like, what was wrong with me in the eyes of them priests? You know, uh, like, I all right, so, so you feel you feel ignored. Rejected. And rejected. Like, I, was a, I was a good looking fucking kid. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, not God. once. I have pictures of that, actually. Of me? Yeah, remember yeah. when you... Remember when like, you sent those pictures of? Uh... Yeah, show me, man. I was touchable as fuck. Oh, wait, hold on. I don't have. Uh... Where was that? I don't have it uploaded, but uh... you have it on your phone. Yeah. Do you just save pictures from me <laughs> on my family? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I had. I, I have pictures of everybody but your dad. I think. Yeah. Where is it? <laughs> yeah, no, I was. I was pretty pretty let down that it was rejected in that sense it's a uh, almost like a badge of honor here it was probably the haircut man that, that, that was the style back then come on anybody in the 90s i could guarantee you 100 percent that daniel roberts had this exact same haircut 100 <laughs> percent. god where god i'm i'm scrolling because i know when when you sent the picture it was on our way mm -hmm. to europe and so I'm looking for like March 31st, but I'm scrolling through all these pictures from our trip. Um, <laughs> oh, well, oh, here he is. Here he is. This is him now, as you can see, or recently. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Like, that's victim written all over it. Like, I'd, how you... I'd touch that. <laughs> you did? I did. See, I'm, I'm touching it right now. Yeah. Oh, he oh, gone. You swiped right. You fucking paid it. <laughs> oh, oh, and uh, I, I did. I, 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 you, you would have been asked to leave the gynecologist waiting room if you if, if you were. <laughs> There's nothing we can do with him. <laughs> no. Yeah. Sorry. Um, send him back to church. Um, let's see. I don't get a one all over. <laughs> that I was a one. One all over, man. I'm bald and have a little fucking. This is a one thing. all over. This is a yeah. zero all over. I'm clinging on, man. Actually ahead. Call me now. I'm all good unless it rains and then I'm fucked. So we got Loki saying he had a Jewish girlfriend. Those are uh, those. I don't know why I just said those. Those are nice. <laughs> I had, a Jewish girl, I had a Jewish girlfriend once who turned into a Jewish wife and now she's a Jewish mother. And. Uh, and uh, she's downstairs on Mother's Day by herself because I'm doing this. <laughs> you got, I mean, you got to love the prize that I am. I mean, it's 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 crazy. Um, uh, why is Owen wearing Plymouth Argyle colors? That's a good question. This isn't. This is uh, the the team I coach. There, it's the um, their colors. Their colors. Well, mm -hmm. you have to. If you coach them, you should be able to decide what their colors are, right? I mean, you could change it to red and white. No, they're a big franchise, as you would call them in America. They're not. I don't. I'm just a fucking coach. <laughs> <laughs> big franchise. It. I remember when uh, when Birdie Me came in here and tried to change us to black and pink. Um, oh wait, we are black and pink next year. <laughs> uh, Danny asks, when you see a fellow Jew, do you have a secret, special secret hello without speaking? Yeah, it's called Shut a off. colonoscopy. No, <laughs> actually. When we approach another Jew, we just say, doctor, doctor, <laughs> <laughs> you've got a 55% chance. And, uh, and and if they're like, no, then you go, lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I have a list of things to talk about here. Uh, oh, so hard to imagine, but I'm we're, we're now less than 10 days. We're 10 days from my next visit across the pond. 
this was an impromptu one uh, where I just could not. I, I had FOMO that I turned into <laughs> like, what's the what's the I'm actually going to go now uh, version of Gomo. Gomo. No. Uh, so yeah, I get in on Thursday morning, the nineteenth. I'm going to be going to uh, as hopefully all of you did buy tickets if you're going to be over there uh, to the uh, to the Ars Blog Arsenal Vision show. They ran out of seats, so I offered to sit on the stage, like like as a counterweight, like 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 Andrew and James and and Clive and and Elliot and and, and whoever else on one side, and then me on the other side to like make sure that the stage doesn't <laughs> doesn't get out of balance. I'll be the ballast. No, you had to be their, uh, their drinks bitch the last time. Yeah, I'm like, who? Yeah, who's gonna bring? I mean, this is like an actual. This isn't the Arsenal, uh, what was it, the Victoria Tavern, which is a lovely place with a good, nice room to do a, a podcast stage and all that. Probably had about 40, 50 people there. This is an 800-seat theater in a church, I believe, near the Angel um, in that area, like like just kind of on the outskirts of Islington, I think. Um, and it's going to be ridiculous. They sold out 800 seats in like a very short period of time um i'm excited to be there just should we do one of these famous you know, person adjacent seen, is, is my is my role I, I we've seen um lee judges tv with uh, lee and dan and harry simu and tom canton and sophie kevin campbell and now obviously arse blog and arsenal vision uh, all these people doing them should we do one of these meet sell tickets for 50 quid well obviously if we sold tickets it would be for charity purposes no uh, <laughs> I need the money, man. I've got to be a fuck I brought that up, and 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 Jared, who hates charities, yeah. Uh, and I can say that because hopefully he's on his honeymoon, and hopefully he's finally found out what it's like to have sex. Um, <laughs> he uh, he hates charity, and he he threw the idea down. Um, well, this is what I'm bringing up. I I, did, I wasn't just bringing up the fact that I'm going to this this thing. I am trying to put together, and it's so last minute, and any help that I could get, but I'm trying to put together essentially a version of what Highbury squad and Lee judges TV did at the, at the Hippodrome, but either at the Tollington or the Arsenal Tavern um, for the Friday night, the 20th. So it's uh, uh, it, it, I mean, it'll happen if we want it to happen. It just might not be what I want it to be. I've, I've been kind of pulling out all the stops as far as trying to get some, some people worth coming to visit to come. Uh, not just me sitting on a stage talking about gynecology and colonoscopies. Um, so, uh, you know, I've asked a few of, of, of the people I know. Elliot will, will be part of it. Uh, I'm not so sure about anybody else. Uh, Lee Judges TV will be part of it. So we're going to do something, and we're, and we're going to, you know, broadcast it. It might not end up being from the Tollington as we had thought, uh, but just if you are in London on the 20th and you want to have a fun night, get ready for uh for the weekend that should be a massive one definitely come mark i would love to see you uh there anybody else that's there uh but we'll be supporting gunners versus cancer which is the one charity that danny supports um which i appreciate i don't want to tell him that i just pocket all the money um and i use it for for pringles and and, and tweets and, and, and sweets. But, but yeah, so essentially at this point, we're not announcing anything because I don't know any of the details, but somewhere in North London, there'll be some sort of informal or formal gathering with a charitable undertone for Gunners versus Cancer with, uh, with many of your favorite podcasters. I think Tom will be there actually. He's, he said he, uh, he can make it. So, uh, so at worst, at worst, it'll be a podcaster kind of Q and a and meet and greet at best. It might have some special, uh, arsenal related faces there that uh that, that everyone would love to see and of course uh door prize of a crunchy bar for everybody <laughs> i might even order some lamb ribs to the pub if we do it at the arsenal tavern it's right next door to the lamb rib place and to our place that uh that the Stop guy me. recognized me from yeah yeah we're, we're pretty hard to forget. It's not every day. Like we did a comedy it, show from dudes from dudes chip shop or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, just for our for our own educate for our own entertainment. 
Yeah, that's the Arsenal Tavern. That's why I hustled those those guys and put. Yeah, <laughs> yep. you did. So, so fucked up. You could have hustled them a lot worse than you did, though. At the, at the oh, I was game. super nice. They wanted to play for so much money, and I was like, Nah, man. <laughs> it's like you realize I'm the Thierry Henry of 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 pool right now, and you're <laughs> you're you're walking in and challenging me to a dribbling contest. <laughs> Yeah, no, man, I'm devastated that I'll not be able to make it over for that. Obviously, with the circumstances, I don't, I don't appreciate your priorities. Yeah, you, I know. Said you, want, you said you wanted to come back and talk about this, so, so yeah, so I asked if you could come join me that weekend, crash on my couch as 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 people do, um, and uh, and have a good time. And and you had something else more important than that going on. Yeah, the baby is due. Ianella, Lenezra. Uh, <laughs> Someone put that in the chat like like an hour ago, and I and, and I didn't get to it. But yeah, I've actually got a, an Arsenal e name, name for a, a boy, which is Alex. So Alex like his ads, that's, that's not... Why is that only for a boy? Isn't there kind of an Arsenal nah, player a who's a female name, named maybe. Alex? No, we've got a uh, we've got a girl's name already. Is it well. Siobhan with like a bunch of like superfluous no. letters that don't even make any sense? No, I told you, man. Irish spellings aren't just good. No, it's Mila. It's wow. I'm surprised you're uh, you're actually going with the you know simple names. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm simple. surprised you're actually announcing them. No, 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 no. Well, they've been picked for a long time. We're very organized. So people. will Alex? Will Alex Young's middle name be Scott? <laughs> To do that, <laughs> don't tell your wife. Just be like Alex Scott Young. No, because I get aroused every time I think of the. the, the <laughs> well, based on that picture you sent to our group, I, I <laughs> maybe did look like Alex Scott a little bit. <laughs> he sent us a picture of the baby. Tried to trick us into into thinking that he had had the baby already. The picture of the baby. Who did we say the father was? Oh no, I can't go there. <laughs> I, just, I just remembered who who we said was the father, and and that that yeah, is not nice. Yeah, no, let's say uh, <laughs> I forgot who it was. <laughs> yeah, let, let's 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 say we it was uh it, it was uh no nah, I, I just I, I'm not gonna do that to anybody who's alive right now. Um, but yeah, Alex James. Alex James Young, James Young, uh, Paul. You go Paul Young. See, you have the perfect no. last name, Paul Young. See, a lot of people don't think that, yeah. and it's a thing. And again, not to go political, but it's, it just shows how backwards this fucking stupid country is. Like even Alex, Alex. But a lot of people are like, "That's a Protestant name." <laughs> it's, like, it's like it's a fucking name. Go with Yitzhak or Moisha then, because you know it's, that's not a <laughs> Protestant name. Go with Jacob. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I, I could give less of a fuck about what people think about. You should go with, and and this the entirety of this is the name. You should go with Danny the GFP. No, Danny the, the, the GFP the, the, Young. This Paul is Young, this Paul is Young, oh, a nice musical artist. No. Did a, did a um, musical video on on the street right next to ours in London one time. That would be a nice uh, nice name. There's a, there's a guy I, I actually know that has this name, and his second name is Young. He's uh, no relation, surprisingly. But um, his first name is Phelan. <laughs> <laughs> that, I swear, and no his brother, get like, him. No get him all like. there. His name is Phelan, which uh, I don't know. It's Phelan a traditional Irish name. It, it may be. It, does. it may be. It's, it's like P-H-I-E-E-I-E-I-O-L-E-M. Yeah, yeah, some shit like that. Yeah, it's like it's a just... variety of Liam. Like yeah, Liam. it's like how long after naming the child that do you think that the parents went, "Oh fuck, <laughs> you're not serious." Oh, I swear to God. Yeah, oh my God, I thought you were no, just... really, I swear it on my life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, there's just... Phelan is a, 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 it's a. Let me just double check while we're while we're talking here. But his it's name a is seriously. I mean, like, like I, I was like, okay, I'm not falling for this. But like, no. his name is Philem Young. Philem Young, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I swear to God. I need to yeah. see proof. You need to show me, like, a. How do you know this guy? Um, he was in my brother's class in school. Let okay, me... so we need we need like a yearbook picture or something like no, that. No, wait. Let me go to Facebook and I'll see. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just doing my research here. Two seconds. Feel I'm young. So, all right. 
any other uh, this is a good uh, a good topic any other names that like be, before it's too late and he goes and slaps one of them names on the kid um we have a chance uh and i am giving away i know you you support gunners versus cancer but we're going to do a real quick thing if you donate to the to the shirt raffle between now and the baby being born uh the the person with the highest donation gets to name the baby we were going to do that for for mike hers's baby but then like i lost track of how many babies he was having <laughs> um right let me see i have it here uh i'm gonna go to the snippet tools by the way to... andy and i and the best the best worst decision andy and i ever made was adding three people to the podcast who who immediately got married had a baby <laughs> had multiple babies and like do don't want to do anything but pot but but not podcast on our channel and like myself we all do podcasts on other channels <laughs> Like you can see Owen feature regularly on the Gooner talk. Uh, I, I, I'm on the Sunday roast. Andy is nowhere to be seen. Um, Mike has his own podcast. Jared is preparing right. for Newry. Yeah, he's yeah, he's gonna love Newry, man. And I'm really nervous because Mike, you seen um, I think me and you were quite well aligned in terms of how much that we like to consume alcohol. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm just slightly worried that Jared maybe isn't on the same on the same. I could, see, as... I could see Jared being like a, a whiskey like guy, a, he... a, sip, a sipper of fine, a fine bourbon. Yeah, or fine see, that's scotch, not going to work. You know, like uh, you know, I I could see essentially this is how I envision Jared like spending his honeymoon is you know with the uh, <laughs> you know very very. Uh, oh. <laughs> with the pipe upside down so that all of the the, the snuff falls out but uh but yeah this is very very yeah. cultured sort what was a uh, i just I, I sent you that picture on twitter so you can you can you can have a look at that and that that will back up my point yeah um can but I, yeah no uh, I, i'm can i put it can i put it on the, i'm not gonna oh absolutely it. yeah i don't give a fuck <laughs> Yeah, feel him young. <laughs> Just feel him Malachi young. <laughs> Malachi young. Feel him ma like Malachi. Like, is that, is that how a person feels? Like, like he feels a little Malachi. <laughs> no, it's, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that the dude is well aware of how shit that name is, <laughs> and he's put his middle name in there just to try and sort of soften the blow. John has uh, has said, "I genuinely went to college with someone named Getting Dick." <laughs> <laughs> That's Sean Dykes' uh, brother's name is uh, enormous or uh, massive. <laughs> no, that could go. That could go two different ways. I was thinking in terms of of, of Dick, but uh, because I wouldn't. I wouldn't use that word to describe uh, as a pejorative. I certainly would not ever do that. Mm -hmm. um, but shall uh, we wrap up? Yeah. Let's 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 just. The final question we have is from Kate. What else do you have on that desk? Since we're doing a show and tell, we have uh, we have from the desk of Michael Feinberg, and I just use these to draw, you know, of course, penises. Um, we have the, the the I haven't used this in a while, but we have the famous the famous uh, what is this called yeah. <laughs> the kettle? Because for those of you who don't know the backstory, I was absolutely. Would you say that I was? dragged through the mud was i was i i mean lambasted for heating up water in a microwave yeah yeah it's sacrilegious for a while until until kevin campbell saved me by by dubbing me magic mike i was known as microwave mike and uh and and that was no bueno I, i'm pretty sure you were called micro mike for a different reason it's not to do with the microwave <laughs> that's, that's what my gynecologist calls me. <laughs> um i've got yeah, I think I talked about this last week. I got my the old football content award for the uh, Gooners versus Cancer. It certainly, you know, was never going to win a football content award for content. <laughs> it, it, had for, it had to be for uh, for for a charity situation. I've got uh, remote controls for the Roku and for the for the regular TV. Uh, there's not too much other interesting shit. It's very messy. Oh, I have. Oh, I have this. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> like 
I have this, which which I'm I'm, I'm absolutely gutted because Wednesday morning or uh, yeah Wednesday morning last minute, I got tickets for for a pro wrestling show that was happening in Baltimore, which is like Baltimore to where I live is it's about 45, 50 minute drive, um, which is exciting because the team Arsenal, by the way coming to baltimore uh this summer which is very exciting and we'll talk about that more as it gets closer but um but yeah i was gutted because i bought tickets that i thought based on how wrestling shows normally set up were going to be right in the center of where the camera would be shooting and and i went with a with a with a buddy of mine who i went to high school with in london like we met in london turns out he lives an hour away from me we recently reunited, and, um, and so we went to this show together. I bring my things. Even though he's a Chelsea fan, he must not be a good Chelsea fan because he wore uh, one of my son's Arsenal jerseys uh, to the game because we, you know, we're going to be on camera. We're going to break the internet again with the, with the, with the signs and the, the, the Arsenal till I die and the gerbil signs and all this stuff, just like we did, just like we did in, uh, in October and or in january and we get there and the camera's like two rows behind us like there's like we're not camera facing we're basically backing to the camera which is why those tickets went on sale the day of and i just sat there crying for the entire four hours because i needed to be on camera uh so no we didn't get on camera i erased all the tweets that were like publicizing that we we're going to be on the on the show and and that sort of stuff, but yeah, Kate saw last time I was on the. That was that was phenomenal. That uh, we got a lot of free advertising for Goonerdom. Um, I may even have a picture of that uploaded here. Oh, speaking of bar mitzvahs, by the way, here's a picture from mine. Brian Feinberg. I mean, that's 13 year old Mike holding a glass of wine that I probably did not take a sip of. Hard to believe, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> That's my mom at what? Uh, she would have been 39 Fox. That, that year. My sister at 16 and my beloved father, uh, who's no longer with us. That's a Talus, by the way. That's the shawl that I was talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, I still have this this Talus. I just almost never remember to wear it. But uh, you can't see the yarmulkes on because it's basically blending in with the hair. But uh but yeah so that's speaking of bar mitzvahs and then this was me a couple years later <laughs> what the fuck happened <laughs> i'm benjamin button um and then this is me now <laughs> just eating thank you sebi for these pictures eating a ton of manchis um what was i oh so so yeah so i, I was gutted that uh that that we didn't get on tv but just for kind of showing what happens when you age for those of you who are young this this was jeff and i uh right before our prom so we're coming full circle here this is uh we we had a double date that night uh his date was substantially hotter than mine but mine was still cute uh and then this is what happens over the course of 32 years (laughs) (laughs) fucking life had used boys hard yeah i mean the hair gods did us no favor. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know why or how I got well, got him to wear an Arsenal jersey, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to bring him over to the dark side or to the light side from the dark side. I have a feeling he'll, he'll, something's going to happen over the next few years that might accelerate that trend. He'll, he'll be transitioning. But, uh, but that's Jeff, my buddy from, uh, from 16, 17 years, years old, who, uh, who I'm now back in touch with. And, and we're going to the hockey game tomorrow night. So like we're dating. We're, we're we're dating really seriously now. Like we went thirty two years without seeing each other, and it's going to be three times in ten days. Yeah, it's, it's nice to see that a man. Oh, here, here's is here's the picture I wanted to put up. Oh earlier. yeah, there we go. That's Mike. That's, That's Mike. from my colonoscopy end endoscopy. Why there was a fire underneath the in the hospital? I have no idea. But they and they kept turning me. But I need to close this Phelan Young tab before I play to Adam as a friend. <laughs> oh, oh, he's not a friend. No, no, oh, he won't be me. watching this then. No, 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 no. Which will make it even more weird if he does <laughs> watch it. <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in. Or I'm gonna tell Danny to put that in as one of the keywords so that when he's searching, when when he's searching, um, 
uh, YouTube for content involving him, th- this is what he'll get. Top, top of the charts. Yeah. All right. So we've reached the uh, the the one hundred minute point where we, we really start degenerating into talking about nonsense on top of nonsense. So uh, so yeah, we are uh, we're going to wrap this up. Oh, and I could not think of a better substitute for Danny for this. Uh, I knew you'd be able to just blag on about about stuff, and uh, and, and and I missed podcasting with you anyway. So uh, so if ever Danny has another episode where he doesn't really feel like going uh, for a podcast and, and and blabbing on with with my dumb ass, uh, I'm sure we'll see you back. And you can have your you can have the baby uh, now. Are you going to break this baby's leg as well, or or will that not be happening? <laughs> nah, I don't know. It's kind of tradition over here, so it uh, depends. I need to find find the hammer. But no, look, it's a it's a pleasure. Big boots to fill in terms of Danny's, but uh, it's a bit like lasagna gate. You know, the, the circumstances could align that would see me return someday. So I look forward to it. Let's hope so. And uh, and and to everybody in the chat, have a wonderful Sunday. Come on, you gooners! They are uh, magically getting it done for me. And um, and and so, as we always do, wish a happy uh, Sunday evening to you. And one more time, we'll get to talk. See uh, Danny's mom calling me a Jew, or Danny calling me a Jew, which is always fun. Good night, all. Welcome to the the Sunday Roast with Mike and Danny. This is Danny and this is Mike and we're kind of strange. We're in the tub and we drink a lot. At least one of us does. This is not Mike's body, but that is Danny's. And that's really gross. Thanks for watching the Sunday Roast. We love our fans. And here's Danny's mom. His name's Michael. Is it? Yeah. Oh, there you go. (laughs) (laughs) And he's a Jew. You can tell he's a Jew. Ask him him who's his daddy. Magical moment. I can almost taste Danny. (laughs) 